Hello, KCIW listeners, and welcome to Curry Cafe, where we put together a panel of volunteers and guests who discuss various topics from whimsical and fun to more serious subjects. Okay, hello again. My name is Ray Gary, and you're listening to, as you just heard, the Curry Cafe. Curry Cafe is an informal discussion group put together by us. Uh, it, it's a live broadcast, and if you want to join in, our phone number to call, well, our text number actually is 541 661 4098. 541 661 4098. Operators are standing by, uh, so if you hear something that you want to join in or discuss or something, just give us a text real quick, like. Today we're, we're going to talk about artificial intelligence, which seems to be a pretty hot subject around the world right now. And uh, in a minute, we're going to introduce the uh, very carefully selected uh, people from our community who have uh, studied this field a great deal, and they will introduce themselves and tell you their qualifications for doing that. But before we get started on the show, I have to uh, just say a word about Willie Mays. When uh, when I was a kid growing up on Long Island, we had three baseball teams that we could choose from, and I was of course a Brooklyn Dodger fan, and they, some of my friends were Giants fans and and Yankees fans, and there were three people. Each team had like a superhero that we watched every year. Um, the Yankees had Mickey Mantle, the Dodgers had Duke Schneider, and the Giants had Willie Mays, and Willie Mays was. Uh, like I said, like a superhero, he was known for his fielding, his his hitting. He was always up there with those three guys who were always battling it out for who would have the most home runs. And even though I was a Dodger fan, and of course Dodger fans have to despise the Giants, uh, we all loved Willie Mays. So I can't say he'll be missed because we haven't seen or heard from him in quite a while. But it's another hero of my youth has passed. Has passed, I should say. Okay, let's go around the table now and start out. Okay, hi, everybody. I'm Robin Renee, and Ray, I'm not an expert. I have to admit that in order to find out about AI, I had to Google it, which is AI. <laughs> so there we go. Okay, so now you're an expert. <laughs> All right, and I'm Rick McNamer, volunteer, and yeah, say hey, kid, man, rest in peace. I was a a fan also. I got to see him his last year. His last year, he, he had been in, he, he, when the Giants went to California, he went with them. But his last year, they traded him to the uh, Mets, who were another uh, New York baseball team. And he played that last year, and I'm sure the Mets hired him just because they knew he would be a big ticket drawer. I'm one of them that bought a ticket to go see him play again. But anyway. Right on. Okay. All right. So, yeah, expert, no, me neither, but that's okay. We're going to learn something today. I vacillate between uh, Luddite and part-time techie. I use it sometimes, love it, hate it at times. So we'll see where AI goes. Hi, I'm Nicole Frenzel. I am also not an expert, but <laughs> extremely interested, a little frightened and about this AI stuff. But like Robin said, you sure find a lot out about on the internet, which is AI. And it's kind of scary to me. We, I've always heard about AI, and I'd seen a little bit of about what it did, but I never really experienced it uh, right in front of my eyes. It, I've always been a wildlife and uh, outdoor photographer, and haven't been doing it for a couple of years. So six or eight months ago, I decided I'd get back into it, and I went to Photoshop to see what's new. Well, I was more than shocked to find out what's new. They have a program called. AI, and they've always had one called AI. You push the button and the AI might adjust your color or uh, shadows and things like that. But now you can push AI and I can have a picture of Rick sitting here in the studio across from me. If he's on the picture, I uh, push select subject and immediately or a short period of time, Rick is outlined and nothing else is there. And then I could say put subject in the Amazon Jungle wearing a tuxedo with a pink shirt. It takes three or four minutes, but <laughs> there's Rick sitting there. And he's not only sitting there, there are three other choices. 
I could have the Amazon River on behind him or being around him or whatever there could be, uh, whatever AI decides they want to put in there. And if I don't like those three, I can just hit it again. And if I don't like those, I'll say, I don't like the pink shirt. I will make it a blue shirt. This is stuff that's available to the public for about $40 a month, I think it was. And my first thought was, well, it goes photography. There's not much point in even doing this anymore. Uh, you know, a big part of it, at least doing wildlife photography is finding the animal with a, with a good background and things like that. For, for years, there's been things where you could, uh, like, go out to the beach today and take a picture, and uh, there might be nice waves and this and that, but there's no clouds, no interest in the, in the picture. Well, you could just select your clouds and, and add that or add birds in and things like that. But this is just changing the whole picture. And I'm thinking that people who have uh, venues that they take pictures at, those venues are going to be out of luck. W wedding photographers will no longer have to go someplace with the bride and groom and wedding party. They can do it in a studio or whatever and just put the, uh, put the wedding party wherever they want it. So there's good and bad about this whole AI, and I think, I don't, what's the saying, the cat's out of the bag, or I would say Pandora's box has been opened with yeah, the AI. You can't take the genie out of the bottle <laughs> any more than yeah, it's already all of out. That. <laughs> and I guess there's, a, 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 I'm not exactly sure it, how long it's been around, and we were talking earlier, and I said, would you can, uh, include the little Texas calculators that we used, you know, to multiply and stuff, is that AI? I don't think so. It's not but what I'd call intelligence. It's just well, doing calculating. Yeah, okay, okay. But there is a lot of stuff out there. You know, one thing that's intriguing me, being an old or ex-truck driver, I drove truck for the railroad for a while, as is these driverless semi-rigs that they have now that will be on, they're already on the road testing, and driverless cars. And so there's good and bad about all of that. They won't fall asleep. And they and they don't have to do any hours of service. Right. They don't. They're not going to be dr drunk or stoned or whatever. We hope not. But I mean, there again, pluses and minuses. So, but that's that's going to be here. It's already here. And I was reading where some companies they figure in three years or four years they'll be having big rigs out there on the road delivering products. Speaking of uh, driverless cars, <laughs> that's I was in San Francisco last fall visiting a girlfriend here walking down the street, and I saw this car that looked like a police car, but it was unusual looking. I said, that's a weird car. Do they have new police cars? She said, oh, that's a driverless car. And uh, my mouth just dropped open. <laughs> I'd never seen one. I didn't know they were in use in a big city like that. I was just totally astounded. And she said that even though... They work sometimes if there's road construction or something. It doesn't pick up on that, so it can go right through it. You sometimes know, it, it does. It's, just... it's supposed to, but a lot of times it doesn't. I saw a thing this morning where this guy was complaining about uh, driverless cars, and he said during this period that 10 people were killed uh, by driverless cars. And I was wondering, well, how many people during that same period were killed by driver cars? You know, Exactly. Something... Cruising down a highway at 55 miles an hour is dangerous, I guess, no matter how it's... Yeah. Uh, I, and, and I thought of that, we, we all think of that, too, that question. I thought, when it really gets going and there's a lot more driverless cars and trucks, I have a guess that they will actually be safer. Overall, you're not going to have... We're, we're in the very, very, very early stages of this, uh, what right. I like to call the Model T stage. Yeah. Uh, and it will improve. In the, in the in the days of the Model T and cars like that, there were a lot of hazards in, in those cars. And, and the more trucks and cars that are that, I believe everything's electrical. Now, there is some, according to the, my uh, little research, some environmental damage with all the electric and the power, I don't, grid, whatever that, that needs that. But it's certainly going to uh, not, it's going to help the, uh, we're not going to have oil if you get right. my drift there. I can't think of the correct turn, but they're going to be electric, and so we're not going to have the carbon footprint. We won't need to drill, drill, drill. <laughs> Some people still want to drill, drill, drill. You know, the scariest thing about AI is the amount of AI that is surface, surfacing through to all of us on a daily schedule, every day, of every week, of every year. And there's so much that is unregulated 
there's no safe guards, there's no laws, and people are already becoming the victim of scams due to AI. And there needs to be controls put in place and ways for us to protect ourselves as a general public. I mean, it's simple. You can turn AI into phishing emails, and yeah. that can trick mm -hmm. people. And I am very worried about people that are not techie, that find something that's AI. There hasn't been any rules, regulations, or enforcement in place. And I think that a lot of people tend to lose a lot if they don't educate themselves on what AI is. Yeah, and I believe, like Ray was, we're going to have to go into this uh, gingerly or whatever. The federal regulations, I believe, will have to be a big part of this. I know that ticks a lot of people off, but you can't just let people helter skelter. Even the ones that are doing the, let's say, the uh, uh, the semi truck driverless rigs, they're going to have to. Uh, have certain regulations to follow, even though there are no, no drivers to worry about with the hours of service. They're going to have to pull them over occasionally, maintenance, you know, do double and triple checks. It's going to be a uh, just a long process, I think, before Is they get rolling. A, a big problem now with with uh, our artists losing their their uh, oh their copyrights, musicians, and music, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, you could I'm uh, sure uh, get a get a program or, or Ask the uh, computer to write a book by Hemingway about fishing, and it would write a book using Hem Hemingway's style and all of that about fishing. And it's probably good enough that it would work. What scares me is um, people, human beings, have to input this data, right, for AI. So how do you decide who decides who's going to input it on what? topic it is. Are they an expert on that topic? You know, that's kind of scary about who's actually doing it. And if the person inputting this data is racist or biased or whatever, I yeah. don't, that can come through, I think, possibly. It, it doesn't even need to be somebody that's racist or biased in any way. For example, when AI first started, and this was back in, I want to say the 80s, with the government and military, the information for AI is only as good as the data provided right. for the AI. But what AI does is it extrapolates the information that it was provided, and it runs its algorithms, and it can anticipate what will happen. So what the Army did is they fed all of the information into computers, and it was male, re more male... Uh, oh, resumes man. and oh. applications. Mm. So everything that the AI came out with was geared towards only male. And that in itself, now that we have women in the services, doesn't work. They have to go back and redo it because AI anticipates from all of the information that's put into it. It extrapolates and comes out with the most realistic answer it can find because it can't think. It's only a machine. And it will never be human. I saw an example, I think, of what you're talking about this morning where uh, this woman was demonstrating, uh, uh, show us a picture of 12 scientists. And it showed 12 men in white coats and, and no, no women and just the stereotypical uh, scientists, what you would picture as being that. So. Well, and then, while you were talking about that, Robin, I just now this is a movie, so here we go. But still, I had visions of the old, uh, the AI Hal in two thousand. Oh yeah, yeah. I can't do that, Dave. Sorry. <laughs> Will it get to that point? I we certainly hope not. I think it, we could honestly say from experience that no, a machine cannot become sentient. It will never become human. It only can do what's fed into it. It can't think. It can only extrapolate information and provide information from what has been extrapolated. It cannot evolve into its own original thought. Well, how it can't have opinions then, right? How could it have an opinions or it doesn't have emotions either? Right. It doesn't. And I'm, and I'm not an expert, so I don't know. But that extrapolation of data 
may come out to be considered one-sided or it might not be as generally asexual okay. Mm -hmm. okay. as we want it to be because it's only as good as the information put into it. And another big negative that I come up with is, and again, we said the cat's out of the bag. It's just, it's, it's going to happen. It's been happening, and from what I understand, it's uh, going to continue happening. But there's going to be a lot of uh, job losses on on this stuff. They, I've even now this is kind of creepy to me, and I'll go to the uh, the Japanese hotels that have had the robot people that check you in mm -hmm. and all your bags. It, I mean, it's creepy to me. But there's people that just aren't going to have those jobs. That's very true. There is AI that will be taking over a lot of the population and the jobs. A lot at, of the as, people that are promoting AI say, yes, it's going to save a lot of labor. We're going to save money. And uh, conversely, I, I guess, but you're going to have to be a pretty sharp tech person to be part of the uh, part of the AI as you build these, whatever you're building, robots or whatever it is. Things. So I guess it will create some jobs, but it seems the job loss would be uh, more negative. I was in a VA hospital probably about 10 years ago visiting somebody, and they had a robot delivering the, the drugs to people. It got on the elevator, went to the third floor, went to room 306, and uh, I, I'm sure they had to have an actual person dispense the drugs, but this thing was just all over the place, and I'm sure that there's many, many hospitals have those now. Well, as far as businesses go, it's going to be very expensive to automate for AI. And I think that it's going to take years and years to get to that point. Mm -hmm. But yes, it will eliminate, I think, human jobs. Yeah. It's, what's very expensive now will eventually get cheaper and cheaper, too, I'm sure. That'll be uh, where you can go down to Walmart and pick up your AI kit and run your factory. So, you know, but Something. the biggest problem is, is AI will never deliver as, or I shouldn't say will never, it may not deliver as promised because it's based on extrapolations and things that has been well, fed. There'll be lots of mistakes. So, there'll yes. be a lot of mistakes. And sometimes those mistakes will be real humdingers and they're going to cause a lot of, of the population a lot of problems. I can't think of anything offhand. Well, yes, I can. What about what is just on the news now? The auto industry, there was a hack, which is AI, that shut down, I don't know how many thousands and thousands of car lots yesterday trying to sell cars. Heard that on the news today. Yeah, I saw that, that too. Mm -hmm. yeah. It shut down the car lots? It, it, uh, the software that all of these yeah. car dealerships use was hacked. So that hack went through to all of the servers all over the world or all over the country and it shut down thousands of auto dealerships hmm. to the point where they actually were chuckling on the radio saying we had to do it by hand like if we oh walk into goodness. a bank and the teller puts the sign up and says sorry i'm closed the computer's down there's no okay. going and doing it manually anymore yeah you see that all the time yeah like yeah. you said ray it's just in the beginning or i mean we still have a lot of work to do on it but um some of these things on YouTube, the um, person that's talking about whatever it is, it's not a person, I can tell, because then they start, uh, their intonations and inflections are all wrong. They don't act like there was a period there and there was, or they mispronounce common words. And, you know, if they're going to do this, <laughs> but very, get the words right. But very frequently, right. though, it is perfect. It's absolutely perfect until they... Uh, need to pronounce a name. Yeah, they, they'll make one. You know, you can watch a ten-minute video, and you you kind of know that it's that it's AI, but it doesn't sound like it. And then they'll uh, you uh, uh, pronounce, pronounce a word phonetically that we don't have phonetically or say phonetically. One of the neat things I think about AI is and not to jump into uh, fluff here, but but just for a minute, I'm. I had occasion this this past week to go to two movies that were heavy AI, and neither one of them are movies uh, I would have normally gone to, but 
circumstances had me going to these movies. And one was the the uh, Planet of the Apes, and I I, I I I just cannot get over how real these apes look. How <laughs> when they they're, they're talking and they have close ups on their face and they look like absolutely living flesh and real. So I, I I looked it up then to find out what, how they did that. And, and sometimes there'd be a whole bunch of these apes off in the trees and stuff like that. And those are real actors, and they have the little red dots on them or something that, that allows the computer to, to, uh, to turn them into apes. But anyway, it was just unbelievable. And then um, or the, the next one I saw uh, was um, The Black Panther. And that's probably AI-wise old-fashioned because what's it, two years old, three years old, something. <laughs> just a, say. amazing things happening in front of my eyes. <laughs> it's just, but the, the apes thing, it, it, it wasn't rocket ships and stuff. It was apes, facial expressions, eyes blinking and... Unbelievable. And, and isn't that all part of the is CGI? Is that right? Is yes, it, yes, yes, yes. All that. Yeah. And I'm not, a, me personally, I'm not a fan, but you know, maybe this is an age thing. And Ray, I, I know that you, like me, is, are, are a fan of the old King Kong. Yeah. From the 19, <laughs> what was it, 30s? Yeah. But I, it's, I still fascinates me. But when I see a, and I don't see many movies with CGI, but I, I'll think of the example. I've seen clips of like uh, the, the Tom Cruise thing, I, whatever he does. He can, you know, be flying in an F four jet and flip out and land on a helicopter blade, and I mean, to me, this is not impressive. Yeah, uh, it, it, because it's just CGI. I, I, to me, I'm more of a fan of that old Ray Harryhausen stuff. But again, I'm sure most young people are not. <laughs> so maybe. Well, I can remember going to see Jurassic Park, which was I, probably yeah, the first saw that kind of big AI movie, and. Um, I was just in awe of it. It was just amazing. It's too bad that they made more and more and more Jurassic Parks and the plots got worse and worse and worse. But <laughs> a group that, oh, and I never saw yeah. Past, yeah, right. The the original one deviated from the book quite a bit. Yeah. But it was it was just amazing to me. Well, and again, yes, there there is a lot of good that, that I was researching. Uh let me as I flip pages, but well, um, in healthcare, artificial limbs that they've developed, I mm -hmm. believe that has a lot to do with some of the AI, uh, the the mobile wheelchairs they were talking about. Now I know we all know you, the ones you can push by hand, but they're 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 making those a lot better and thought fit. controlled. That yes, yeah, thank the you. Artificial limbs will right. work because you're right. to move the fingers. Yep. Um, so uh, again, that's uh, people. So people with disabilities can have a better life. Very true. So that's a okay. Our uh, operator has indicated that somebody is trying to get a hold of us from out there in, in artificial Texas intelligence world. land. Would you like to read that? Okay, we're, we're trying to figure out how to, how to do this. Yeah, and we're working on it. Maybe talking about AI, uh, but we are not. Okay, here we go. CGI, which is computer graphic. Something, imaging, something. imaging oh. is some. They said CGI isn't AI. It isn't. I didn't think so. Oh, I've, I've been it. corrected. So sorry. Is that all there is? <laughs> okay. Okay. Evidently, that person did not hear that we have experts here. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Back to photography. Right, you were talking about earlier, Ray. Um, that's kind of scary because it's been going on a while. But the uh, Photoshop thing. I mean, people now can get other people in trouble by putting someone else's image on someone else's oh, yeah. head. And, yeah, and yeah. so that's the scamming, the in, negative things that put, happen. Put, putting people into porn movies that they didn't get the pleasure right. of making. Right, yeah. <laughs> I think it's going to take a long time for laws to be enacted and controls to be mm -hmm. set in place to protect people because there's always going to be people that are going to take advantage of people that don't know any better, and, yeah. and that's scary. Yeah, yeah the medical of... field too—that's scary, because you know doctors they get the wrong diagnosis or something, and yeah. But the the AI has been shown to be 
a whole lot more accurate than doctors giving doing the diagnosing and uh, things like um, cataracts. They're better at, at determining whether or not cataracts are needed, and I guess they actually can do the surgery and things like that. And then it can get a three-dimensional or 360-dimensional or whatever of, say, a tumor in a brain and where it is and everything, and they can know a lot more about it before they do anything than they used to before. And I imagine that would uh, follow through with kidneys and things like that as well. And the other thing that I find amazing and I don't, I don't know how much it's being used, but they, um, it's, they're not robots, but they're, the, but they're instruments that are controlled by a doctor who's not at the table, and they're much more accurate and they work much better. But you can uh, get a doctor in New York now, evidently, to perform surgery at, in, in Sutter. Uh, all they would need is the facility, and you could have the finest surgeon in the world doing the, the procedure in our local hospital. Is that the same as LASIK surgery? Or? No, I don't no, mean LASIK, I think LASIK is a computer thing for your eyes. Right? That's a laser surgery. Yeah. Laser, yeah, I've heard of them using that. Yeah, there's other, like, prostate cancer and stuff using a have robot. you Have you seen the operations they do now with, with they're, they're not hands, they're things that would look more or less like this, and, and there's a doctor someplace mm. controlling the... Um, Robot. instrument and there's the more they they're less likely to, to make human error and things like that they're apparently a big big deal and will eventually probably do a lot of surgeries but the exciting thing is you can have a, a brain surgeon or somebody doing an emergency surgery that maybe he's one of three people in the world that knows how to do it and he can do it here at right Sutter or wherever they have the equipment to do it now, I'm a little confused. Are you saying, like, there's a bot-type thing doing the surgery? Yeah. Oh, is that it's, happening well, now? You've, yeah, you've seen, you've seen things where oh, like, out with there. Um, instruments are being controlled by somebody okay. With, yeah, okay. at a remote location. Yeah, okay. And that's, that's what they are. Hmm. Robots. Robots, yeah. Um, and so and how about these the drones? And I'm speaking more of the military drones. You know, they, we fight our, some of our warfare that way which, I mean, warfare is not great, but wouldn't we rather not have to uh, sacrifice our soldiers using a drone? But then on the flip side of that, what about the people we fight? What if the terrorists get a hold of all this drone technology? Or maybe they haven't already. From what I, I understand, don't. drone technology is in the te technology field. I mean, not talking about us, but it's not a big deal. I mean, it's, it's fairly basic technology and uh, so pretty much if one side gets it the other side gets it the scary thing about that they have uh, drones now that can pick up the targets and supposedly at least for now they can't fire on their own but they can hone in on a target and saying this jeep's got some bad guys in it or whatever they're doing with the drone when um yeah, I, it, it's a lot safer for the, the company or the country that has the drones to use those to go into combat, but it's not so good for the guy in the Jeep. Well, <laughs> well, even way back in uh, when when we went into uh, oh, we've gone into so many places I can't remember anymore. Uh, Iraq is that what we went into first against Saddam Hussein? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they were they were um, uh, soldiers giving up to drones. The drone would come over and they knew the drone could kill them and they'd be put their hands up in the air. Mm, that, that one I didn't, I don't remember, but <laughs> yeah. good for the drone. <laughs> yeah. Hey, just want everybody to know too, uh, you're listening to KCIW 100.7 Community Radio here in Brookings and feel free to text in 541-661-4098 and you can go on kciw.org if you want to become part of this show and join in the discussion. Yeah, or if you have a, a thing you'd like us to talk about or you would like to talk about, yeah, the same place, kciw.org, and uh, you click on the appropriate click on things, and before you know it, you can be here at the microphone or we can be talking about something that you want to hear spoken about as intelligently as we are speaking about them right now. 
Another negative, big negative I wrote down was uh, the deep fakes that are going on right now. Uh, isn't that part of AI? My deep fakes. Oh, you can get uh, President Joe Biden, if you will, to sit there and talk. You know, oh yeah, Adam, yeah. he's talking like you know. I'm going to go ahead and uh, nuke North Korea. Yeah, this or I'd, uh, I would, but, I would rather be electrocuted in the boat than eaten by that, a shark. Is that that? Surely that's going to generate. <laughs> But again, that that stuff pretty prevalent, uh, from what I understand. Yeah, you know, I see examples of it all the time, but I haven't seen an example of it actually being used. You know, you see a thing on the news saying they could do this. I think but, they've already had some uh, some calls. Uh, what do you call them? Oh, robo-calls, yeah, robocalls. Yeah, will. yeah, yeah, yeah. Biden okay. telling you not to vote, things like that. <laughs> right. Right. If you if you if you're dumb enough to fall for that one, you probably shouldn't be voting. I don't. Know. I just don't know if we're going to be able to put safeguards and controls in place as quickly as the technology is advancing. Right. It. That's I true. don't know who's in charge of doing it. I know that, for example, the company that owns Uber, they hooked up with another company that's putting driverless vehicles, and it's not for the near future. It's happening in California. Mm-hmm. They have driverless vehicles. So yeah. where are the controls and the rules or the – how how do you I, control it? I was driving down five one, one day in a car on the left lane. It was a Tesla uh, passed me, and the driver was reading a magazine. Yeah. It's I don't know. Do, we, do we have driverless cars here? Or are they everywhere? I don't know much about them. That I'm not sure, but I think we've seen that a lot. If, if I, magazine, putting on makeup, we've if, seen it, it all. If I get many more complaints from the the passengers in my car, I'm going to have to get driverless because it's <laughs> the only way I get any peace at all. <laughs> it's the only time you have to read your newspapers yeah. while you're driving. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, and, and, and Robin, again, we bring up a good point. Uh, it's just going fast and furious here with its uh, in improvements, if you will, and it's unstoppable, so... Again, do we uh, hope the companies that have these driverless cars uh, police themselves? I think they're going to have to because oh. we are too litigious. As we a are. Soci- as a society, we will do something about it if they don't. Well, And that's yeah. just what it's going to happen. And then again, think- back to the federally regulated, you know, state regulated, I don't know. People get a lot of, uh, get mad at some of that too. But uh, it's got to be done correctly with the minimum amount of damage, if you will. Aren't they regulated now, the driverless cars? I well, don't think I, you know what? I don't know. They've got to be to a certain point. They just have to be. I keep hearing like uh, uh, places, uh, cities in California are allowing um, pilot programs and things like that. Well, I, I think I that may be for... for, for uh, a taxis or what do they call the other? I think the ones I saw in San Francisco, my friend said they were Ubers or Lyfts. Okay. There were nobody, no one in, was inside at that point. when. So I they are them. using them as a... So, but then I thought, well, how do they get paid or how do they know they're I'm sure it's not all, getting screwed with the rate all, or something? All being done by computer, I'm sure, or by mm-hmm. cur- credit card. Would you get in one of those? No, I would not. <laughs> Maybe ten years from now. But. I, th- I, th- I think I would try it for a short distance. I wouldn't. I wouldn't drive across yeah, LA. I don't know. Yeah, I'm assuming the Uber and the Lyfts that are driverless probably already have the tip jars ready for you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. We see that everywhere, and those tips won't be taxed. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, well, and I'll go back to the the big rigs that I was reading about. I think it was mostly in Florida and a certain stretch where they're testing them. And I believe there's a driver uh, sitting in the vehicles at this time. Yeah. But from what I read, it said, I said this before, I believe within three or four years, they'll be doing their thing on the road. Big rigs, that's... the I I used to spend the whole winter on the road in a motorhome. And uh, you didn't really see big rigs in a whole lot of accidents. On the whole, they're, 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 they're good drivers. But when you did see one, it was almost always... Drove off the road, no brake marks or anything. They fell asleep, very obviously fell asleep and drove off the road. And 
Uh, if you're lucky, they only drove off the road or, or then drove into the other lane and killed a bunch of people. But so I guess it would it would uh, it would eliminate that because the AI won't fall asleep. But the guy sitting there watching it is going to fall asleep because it's awfully damn boring. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, yes. At one point, though, that that guy watching won't be there. That's the plan. Yeah, it's going to simply be the driverless mm. driverless rig. And no, then, can, is, then can you can you can you can you hack into that? The truck is programmed, evidently, to go to a certain place. And can somebody who can of do course. that sort of thing say, oh, no, if there's a computer, don't go to Mary's house. Go to my house with that load of If yeah. there's a computer, it can be hacked. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much. I mean, who's to say nothing? I mean, people say, oh, you can't hack a Mac. Well, I don't think that that's true. I think Macs might be a little harder to hack. But technology is technology, and I think you can hack it. Sure, there's some, There's always, you have to keep a step ahead of the people that want to do damage, right? And there's smart people on both sides of that issue, I guess. Yeah. There are. But again, uh, uh, what else? Just uh, writing down more of the, of the good stuff. Um, travel aids that we have now. Now, again, I might be conflating technology with AI, but like the little Google Maps and stuff that we have where you can oh, talk oh, into it. It's amazing. Well, yeah, it should, you know, the speed limit drops from 55 to 45, and it's right there just as soon right. as you cross right. that spot. Right. Uh, some of them will, will indicate that the road up ahead is has congestion. Uh, yes. Um, but I think that's the, technology. I'm sorry? I think that that might be in uh, technology as opposed to AI. Oh, okay. But does it combine? Is it combined there? I, and I'm I'm not aware of that. It's amazing to me. I'm I'm kind of used to it now, but I used to just love watching the little red line going and make left turn here and left turn there. Were you watching the road at the same no. time? No, no, of on. course not. I'm still trying to figure. Didn't out I tell how you it. that people complain about riding? <laughs> well, the voices that come on the Google Maps, they must be AI. The lady's voice or the man's voice, whatever you're getting. Yeah, and as is uh, um, Siri. Siri, yeah, that? yeah. And Which I can't Or Alexa. Stand. While we're talking about Siri, uh, I have more than one example of Siri or one of her friends listening in when uh, you're not talking to them. You don't have to say, hey, Siri. Uh I've talked about this, I think, on this show before, that uh, not long ago I was uh, talking to people about Blue Heelers because I had a Blue Heeler. Oh, yes. And uh, what a wonderful dog she was and all that. If I ever get another dog, it'll be a Blue Heeler, blah, blah, blah. Within a couple of days in my, in my, in my um, YouTube feed, I'm getting videos about Blue Heelers. Now, I didn't look up any on, on, on YouTube, but they knew I was talking about blue healers another time uh i was at a dinner party with some people and they have one of those things that you talk to to turn on the radio or alexa. Do it alexa. alexa yeah and uh creepy to me but we were talking about a particular restaurant here in town and uh i don't know we talked back and forth good place thing blah 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 and it came on and gave us directions to the restaurant <laughs> That's kind of freaky, really. Yes, that's very freak. <laughs> I don't have one of those. I never. No, I don't, I'm not a fan of the. Yeah. If I want to know something, I I will have the energy to get over and ask my phone, which is I have to, just as bad. I have to admit that I am always walking around the house saying, "Hey Siri, where are you?" And it will answer, "I'm over here." Yes. <laughs> And, and if I didn't have that, I'd be looking for my phone to do. Yeah, so. for some reason or other, I can't get that to work. Because as a, coming here today, I was rushing all over the house. Like, of course, it was in the garage, so I wouldn't hurt me anyway. But Now, the, Robin, good point, because I, I have Siri on my phone. I don't know how it got there. It's kind of weird. But Comes with the program. <laughs> it's it's part right. of the phone. Uh, okay. Uh, I've had this phone for a while. But anyway, I, every time I see that little funny thing, I scroll away. But... I never thought about that. Can you find your phone? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always if, say, "Hey my Siri, where are you?" Off, but if it's off, or it's never. No, it's got to be on for that to work. Yeah, the phone has to be on. Well, yeah, it's on, but so you can just yell out. Yes, you can just yeah, yell out, "Hey uh, Siri, where are you?" I'm and sorry, you'll find out it's Siri. That that's right case, maybe. It just in my just pocket. <laughs> told you. <laughs> just <laughs> buzzed okay. me. I have the sound turned off. <laughs> or, or you find, find out it's on the desk that that you're sitting at. But your desk is such a mess, it's under three weeks of mail and all that stuff. My watch can help me find my phone. 
Really? Yeah. Wow. Isn't that amazing? You know, so you have one of those... Uh... It's a, I guess it's a smart watch. I, I don't know if there... I, I think it says you can talk on the phone, but I haven't figured that one out yet. But it yeah, says uh, your miles, your heartbeat, your, you know, blood pressure and all that. Oh, how many oh. steps. Oh, that's a Fitbit. Yeah, but yeah. it's also a thing on here to find my phone, but I just haven't figured out it. I, be, I, I, I know. I'm I've trying to figure out how to work it. <laughs> I, bef I bought one of those Fitbits for, for somebody as a present, and she became obsessed with it. And I walked. 9,000 steps today. Or I slept two hours, 15 minutes out of Palo Alto. <laughs> I don't, I have enough obsessions. I don't need that. Yeah. And it was a pain for her to program it too. That I don't want to do any of that stuff. I want to know when I'm looking up something on Google and then the next time I'm on my TV at, on YouTube, the same topic comes yes, up. Now, yes. how does that happen oh that's, that's all scary. just in, that's that's obvious the uh, internal stuff yeah was that ai or technology i don't know that that's ai i think it's just programming you you yeah you say something and then your little whatever is going to the the box that you were talking about and the next time you turn on your computer they've taken it out of the box and put it on your screen that's a very technical explanation i may have gone just a little overboard on that but i don't know <laughs> I'm when, shaking my head. <laughs> when my son was nine, I asked him to please clear the table and put the dishes in the dishwasher. And he leans up against the cabinet and he pulls out his phone. <laughs> he went to the store, you know, Apple store. And I said, there's no app for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but kids don't realize that, you know, there is there is an app for just about everything. Yes, at least. And so. you can find anything you want on it. You can probably ask the phone what's the most efficient way to clear the table. Probably. And it will it will come up with thirty five YouTube videos about how to do it. How to love the dishwasher. Yeah, I found out that YouTube videos lie sometimes. Well, after doing things wrong, <laughs> and and Nicole's correct too about that. I, I've done that too. I'm listening to yeah. Well, I, I call it the uh, kind of a brain dead exercise every once in a while. Just, I'll pull up some YouTube stuff, but I, I noticed that a lot. It, you could tell when it's a bot. Or I, I think I can with, with that mispronunciation of a common word, let's say. Or yeah, but it may about. be one word in a ten-minute video, though. It's, yeah, but pretty it's, good. It, but the the voice, well, maybe I don't have the the upgraded whatever. But they're more of a monotone uh, voice if they're talking. You know, when you mm -hmm. some of them are, and some of them aren't. Some of them, you know, and I could be fooled. And some of them are just yeah, yeah, monotone. But yeah. they're getting much better than they used to be. Just the fact that you can type into a search bar a whole question oh. or two, and the AI will come back with a couple of paragraphs of answers. Well, you must, have, you must have an old computer because if you go to Google and type in like two, two words, the first two words, I, what, and it may be a paragraph you want to put in there, it starts right. giving you mm -hmm. suggestions already of what you want. Which is great for me because I hate to type and I can't spell. So, <laughs> I guess I have long questions sometimes. Um, I don't know. Um, well, I'd like to test AI. And if I say a long sentence or type a long sentence out, I need to see how accurate the information is. I'm trying to think of something you could, uh, you could, uh, you could, I don't know. Um, ask some medical question or something. As long as it gets a hint. From the from the first few words, it'll start giving you suggestions. That's true. It may not be the how do I paint, and then and then it will, you know, the box come up. How do I paint a car? How do I paint a door? How do I? Paint? It'll give you all kinds of suggestions. And they're not always the same either. The suggestions you. Oh get. no. Yeah, it's only as good as the information that's been given. And it's been given a lot. A of lot of information. information. So where did I see this morning? There, there, they, they have a. Uh, this guy is starting a company that will basically have everything in in the history of the world that they know on one an app. I, I don't know if that would be an app or whatever. It would have books, music, uh, things about uh, I guess paintings and all kinds of stuff. And the 
this is already exists, and and he's running into problems with the people who wrote the books or the people who did the music, uh, wanting royalties. Oh, well, he's evidently won some cases and lost some others. But imagine going to your computer and typing in the most obscure book you can think of, and then just print it out. It. I'm not sure you could print it out because of royalty oh. claims. Well, when, but when, you might be able to find where you could b purchase it. No, this this has the book. Has I don't the, know if you oh. can. Maybe you have to read it off the off the screen, but it has the entire book. Hmm. Now that's that, so. There are problems with royalties. Okay, so I think overall, that was all. Okay, of course we're probably just bouncing around, but so overall, would you would everybody say AI coming up as fast as it is is a good thing, or or a bad thing? I but I guess it's. <laughs> I don't think both. we have a choice. It's both. It's here, and it's not going away. Right. Right. So, yeah. you know, right now we just have to find a way to make it better and work for us. And control it. And control. control it has yeah. to have controls. Yeah. Checks yeah. and balances. Yeah. And the, what's AI and what's just computer storage? And, and again, I'm, thing. Con yeah, you know, I I am wanna... confused about that. Yeah. I've already if been it, corrected by, by the... I want to know the spark plug gap on my car engine. Uh and I just, that's not AI, that's recovering data. Um, I don't know what a, a related AI thing would be to that. Well, yeah. I think it's fascinating and interesting and it's kind of scary all at the same time, but it's here to stay. It's not going away. And yeah. speaking for myself as a senior, I think it's hard, it's harder for me to deal with some of that stuff. Uh, for ex it, now again, I might be mixing it up. The but when you call customers, uh, the, according to my research, this when you call these customer services that have been taken over by chatbots, I guess they call them, and we've all been there. I think uh, trying to when you dial whatever number you get, and you can tell it's the bot, and then I you could speak to me like a human, and I do, and then I'm sorry I don't understand you. And then I start yelling, and what the heck's going on? Blah blah blah. That's frustrating for yes. older folks. Man. Yes, frustrating for frustrating. anybody. That but, stuff is far from perfect. Oh God! I do like the chat box though, where they where they uh, they give you the little box you can write in what you know that uh, what your problem is with the product or whatever, and then you get an answer. Somebody's typing a real person's typing an answer, but you don't have to deal with accents. You don't have to deal with all kinds of things, and it's just. I, I really like those. Hmm. I've I've had trouble with those two. Yeah, once in a while they work right, or I'll I'll type in the question that I want, and I'm sorry I don't understand you. You'll have to I'll get you blah blah blah. You know yeah. that whole thing. No, it's, and then, it's and frustrating. Then you oh, type in there, but I'm too stupid to come up with a decent Perfect. way to ask the question. <laughs> yeah. Then never and, call again or never. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to participate, again, our phone number, oh, yeah. you can send us a text at 541-661-4098. And if you've just tuned in, I'm a little disappointed that you weren't here on time, but you're listening to The Curry Cafe on KCIW Radio 100.7. And we I have here a panel of experts discussing <laughs> AI. I would like to put out there, though, if somebody is more of an expert than all of us, I would love to have another show with somebody that really can define AI and tell us, educate us. Good point that we can certainly search. Okay, if you're, if you're out there and you are an expert. Yes, please. Um, I'm, I'm sure we have one in Brookings someplace. And another a bad list that I was, as I was researching, of course, this is pretty obvious, but it's, and I think our whole society is becoming this way in a way, the lack of human interaction with, with. I don't like everything. people very much anyway, so that doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> well, I think I like them more than chat bots. I yeah. you say that. <laughs> well, no. that started with cell phone. Now, are cell phones considered AI? No. I, I don't, I don't know. No, no, they're not. I think AI is something where the computer is, is basically making a decision. It's not just puking out information. That Computers can't it. make decisions. They can only anticipate from the information that's been provided and extrapolate an answer, but they can't make a decision. Well, that, that would need thought, and computers don't think. 
well, isn't that what artificial intelligence is? Computers they're not starting sentient. to think. They, but they're not sentient. They don't feel emotions. Not yet, anyway. Anger or... <laughs> no, I, they, I, they I don't know. Well, mine gets pissed at me all the time. I know because it just... What, your uh, computer? Your right, 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 right now, I'm trying to write emails on my computer, and, and my screen is in a different location than my, my keyboard is. And I, so I type, type an email, and I look up, and there's three words. Oh, and that's did, a PEPCAC error. That's a what? PEPCAC. What's Problem that? exists between chair and computer. Did you just make that up, or is yeah. that a real term? <laughs> Problem exists between chair and computer. It's a human error. Very good. But I'm doing it the same. Yes. <laughs> okay, where were we before I was <laughs> learning a new word? R- rudely interrupted well, by smart no, no, no. ass <laughs> But I, well, then I have what do you call it? Pep pep cack. I, I certainly do that. I'm the same way because I'm typing here and I got the monitor there. Yeah, and I'm not a typist. I'm more of the hunt and peck type. I don't know. So it leads me more and more to YouTube where you don't have to uh, do, deal well, with that stuff. You don't have to read. You don't have to do anything. You just have to determine whether or not the person is lying or not. Or is knowledgeable or not. Yeah. Well, I, I, I broke the screen on my phone one time. And I thought, well, this isn't a big deal. It's just a piece of glass on the front of the thing. I, I'm sure there's, there's YouTubes on how to do this. So the first one I look up, this guy has this broken screen, and he says, the first thing you do is you paint the whole thing with uh, uh, kids' glue that they you know, that you used to eat in school, uh, oh. paper glue. Oh. Paint the whole thing with that, Elmer's then group. wrap it in duct tape, completely wrap it in duct tape, uh, put it under a towel, get a hammer out, and beat it. And that, right. <laughs> he says, when you take the tape off, you'll be amazed. But I wonder how many people didn't realize that that was a gag. And it had me going right up to the duct tape. (laughs) Well, and in defense of YouTube, and again, maybe this is not AI, but boy, have I used it over the times to fix little things. Everything. Oh, me too. Everything, Uh, yeah. Yeah, and what it is real good at, uh, I've played guitar since I was a kid, but not all that well. And then when my friend told me, man, just punch whatever song you want to play, you just simply punch in how to play X, and it comes up and takes you right through every little chord change. It, it's great for that. But again, I guess that's not quite AI because I'm just looking at No, it's just recovering information. Things. Yeah. But uh, YouTube, well, like AI, has its good and bad parts, I suppose. Well, yeah, there's a, I could make a YouTube about anything and post it. There, there was a time, as a matter of fact, uh, years ago, I was I was watching a, 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 a video about how to clean the sensor on your um, uh, digital camera, and what it is behind the screen and behind everything. There's a little sensor there that that picks up everything, and if you, you get dust on it or something, it will show up as little dust spots on your on your uh, uh, picture. So it's not a big deal. I mean, this sensor is actually behind glass, and you have to open up the uh, the mirror, flip it up, and like that. And you can wipe that off with just about anything. But uh, people will have you think that you can destroy the sensor by touching it with this or touching it with that, <laughs> which is just not true. So they're doing this this thing, and there's two guys, and one of them is on the phone or something, and the other is showing how to do it, making a really big deal out of cleaning the sensor. So... I comment a lot on YouTube, and I just commented, ain't no big deal. You do sit in that said, <laughs> what you need to do. The very next video in that series, a day or two later, we have a, we have a message from Ray Gary here, and he says, so all of a sudden, I'm the expert. <laughs> How many likes? How many hits? Or is that what they go by now? I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I got any. I didn't get any smart-ass remarks, though. But Well, and and I had to use YouTube. I bought a new Rav Four few month, couple months ago, and uh, it's uh, too much technology for me. Mm. But you know, I figured most of that. But of course, I went to the manual. That can anybody read a owner's manual? I I, I can't. Uh, I, I try to find. I was trying to find out how to tune my radio. 
And that's how they're difficult. Better, they're better than they were 10 years ago for a Japanese car. At that time, Oof. they were written by somebody who English was a fifth language. Or well, right. you okay. understand. well, whatever it was, I had to, yeah, YouTube how to, anyway, it took me through better than the owner's manual. I've never been a good owner's manual yeah. reader. I can never, you know, you go right to the, uh, uh, the not the dictionary, where index. you look up index. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you. And I could never seem to find it. But anyway, that YouTube video, I had to go out in my car and turn it on and follow the little, you know. I do that kind of thing all the time. I mean, man, without yeah. that, I don't know. But you got to watch that guy with the duct tape and the hammer, though. Because <laughs> he's still get, out there making videos. And they made one on how one. to tune your yeah. radio. Yeah. I learned how to change a drill bit on YouTube. Oh. That was cool. It is cool. Did you learn what to do with it? Yes, I did. Did you drill a hole? Yes, I did. Wow. And it was exactly the right size <laughs> and everything. <laughs> Gosh. Okay, well, we're kind of winding down here. I don't know if we've covered everything. We certainly yeah. haven't uh, with our panel of experts. I don't think we can cover AI in one hour. <laughs> no, well, no. Plus, it's changing all the well, time anyway. It is. I, I was hoping we would be able to do it since we had such knowledgeable people here, but we don't <laughs> Uh, maybe we need to do the show again. Well, there's plenty of uh, info about that, I suppose. And again, if you are listening and want to partake into the show, KCIW.org. You know, uh, changes is 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 normal. It happens. It happens all the time. And uh, we get sometimes a little scared of thumbs, afraid of things that are changing. Uh, when the cotton gin was developed, it was... Uh, driving people out of work, who was doing all sorts of things. Uh, new technology is always a little bit scary, but that takes years usually. Like the cotton gin, I, I believe it was actually invented quite a while before it was actually put in wide use, but this is happening like overnight, like a, like a, like in a flash, we're, go, we're going into this, and that's the big difference. And, and yeah, at a pretty rapid pace. Yeah. Hard to yeah. keep up. Every time you turn on the news, there's some other uh, interesting thing that's happening. You think it'll do away with professors in colleges and stuff? No. I'd like uh, it to do away with the awful. Supreme Court. I would prefer bots right now. I think now. that's a whole different Supreme subject. Court. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, no. Court. Another show. Yeah. You know, I think they, they say that you can, you know, you can get... Uh, um, term papers and things like that, just get them off the internet. And I'm, right. I'm sure they must have a way now that you can put in there uh, how you want that written. Maybe you'd have to provide them with some things you have written, and that would get your writing style and whatever, and then you could fake it like that. I think that's kind of becoming a problem now, right? It is a problem now, I think. Yeah. But it, can they, they, it, it's a problem of writing it in the student style? Yes, um, there was a article not too long ago in the New York Times, I believe. It was a teacher, professor, no names no, of the college or the students, and there was a student that turned in a paper, and the teacher just ran the first few sentences, typed it out in the computer, and found out that the whole article was plagiarized. <laughs> The whole thing was plagiarized. So you can, it, it is a problem. You know, a lot of people don't want to do the work, so they do the easy thing and ask AI. Yeah. Yeah. You know, write me a story. <laughs> would I have used that maybe in high school? Probably. Probably. Oh, I yeah. certainly <laughs> would have, yes. Good heavens. Yeah, my biggest problem was uh, one minute doing, uh, doing term papers. I had to go to the library and things like that. Um, Horrible. Huh? Horrible. Yes, it was. But now I, I'm surprised they still have libraries. Well, they're, they're baking cookies and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're down to the last uh, 40 something seconds here. Anybody have any final comments or say hello to their mother? Nobody? Nope, I'm just glad we were able to talk about it and find out what experts uh, we truly are. <laughs> And again, if you want to participate in one of these talks someday, kciw.org and click the appropriate things and we'll have you in here becoming a famous radio personality.
Okay. Adios. We're out of here, I think. Bye-bye.